Hi, my name is David Summerfleck, and I'm a digital marketing specialist at DMS.Blue. And I wanted to take a few minutes to basically discuss the need for having what we call a digital marketing plan or web plan uh, in order to really get the most return on investment for your website development and digital marketing. A lot of people are very attracted to this promise of something for nothing that you see in these uh, so-called free DIY template generator services out there. Um, and I do believe that they serve a function for hobbyists or people who just want to have fun um, or experiment with what it may be like to have a website for a hobby. But the important distinction is, the at the end of the day, the important distinction is the need to get more customers for a legitimate profit-driven biz business. So many people see a hobby as a business or a business as a hobby, and the lines may be blurred. Um, you know, you can easily go to bars where the owner is drinking on the job and the staff is drinking while they're supposed to be working. Um, you can go to any kind of store and see people who, you know, really aren't answering the phones, really aren't invested in the business and really don't care if it succeeds or not. If you're going to create a website for a business, it's really important that you start getting more phone calls and more emails from people who want to work with you. Otherwise, what's the point? And free template generator services are really not going to deliver that outcome for the vast majority of businesses. In fact, I can tell you, after having been a, a digital marketing specialist for over 20 years and working as a project manager for agencies and working and advising with hundreds of clients, I've never seen that happen, not once. So I really wanted to take a few minutes and discuss the need for having an organized, deliberate plan before you begin uh, basically thinking about a website, thinking about social media. It's important for everything to be tied together as a cohesive whole. So I wanted to talk about that. You want to play the business game to win. So what does that mean? It means that you want to create a marketing plan in order to get the greatest potential return on investment or our ROI for the money and time that you're putting out there. If you're putting no money out there and very minimal effort, then that is what you will get back. Um, a thorough plan will help you get more done in less time. And at the end of the day, time is money. So you will have less stress. You'll increase your chances of achieving more important business objectives, such as increasing revenue by specific percentage points and just growing a real business. Nobody has a profitable business for free. It just doesn't happen. So this idea that you can get a website for free and your phone's going to be ringing off the hook and people are going to email you wanting to do business with you, I've never seen it happen. Not one time. I've seen plenty of people, especially a lot of lawyers, a lot of small business owners, go and do or start a DIY template generator site and end up losing years and years of their lives and lose thousands upon thousands of dollars worth of clients to their competitors on a daily basis. I remember talking to a lawyer whose story was really quite sad, how she was contemplating going and taking a job at Starbucks because she just wasn't making enough money as a lawyer. If you can believe that, she wasn't getting any phone calls. So at the time I talked to her, I was kind of tired um, and stressed out. And I just said, ma'am, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. And that's what I did. I ended up answering questions instead of just listening and then honestly, you know, diagnosing the problem and then asking her if she wanted help. So I just answered the questions. And after about an hour, she told me that she felt completely overwhelmed, completely confused, and would therefore do nothing. Even though she was losing tens of thousands of dollars every day and lost clients who were going to her competitors. And she was getting ready to, you know, go work at Starbucks. 
she was ready to just forget it and do that rather than deal with all these complexities and this feeling of being overwhelmed. So I want people to try to be able to avoid that by being prepared in advance. You want to get more customers. You want more referrals. You want more leads. Otherwise, what's the point? So let's take it seriously. You want to define what we I call your CCS. This means your core competencies or what we used to say, what brought you to the dance. We define your core competencies as what is it that your business offers in terms of products or services that differentiates you from all the other local or regional competitors. Your core competencies will determine what you offer. It also uh, uh, will determine how you should offer those services and ultimately who you should be targeting, at least to some extent geographically. You need to know what sets you apart from every other person or business out there. It may be the way that you do things. It may be your personality. It may be the way you work. It may be the type of service you offer. But you've got to define that before you even think about getting started. Next is you want to identify who is your ideal customer. A lot of people will say, well, my ideal customer is anybody with a pulse. And honestly, that spreads you so thin um, that you end up inevitably taking clients that you really shouldn't, who are just going to wear you down or not know what they want or have very low budgets or just going to want things that you can't deliver. So it's really important to be clear on who your ideal customer is. You cannot be all things to all people unless you're Walmart. And even Walmart went through a period of time where their sales were dropping because they couldn't differentiate themselves from all the other players out there. Target, on the other hand, found their niche by saying, we're the high end Walmart. We're Target, right? So people will go there expecting to pay a little bit more, but knowing we're going to get a little bit more quality. We're going to have a little bit more variety. So you want to focus in on how to deliver, deliver excuse me, your core competencies to those who can benefit, benefit from those the most. You want to work with people who have a need for the services or products that you're providing and can afford your services. If they don't have a need and they can't afford you, then you really shouldn't be talking with them because they can't do anything. They can't work with you. So this is called identifying your buyer persona. And you can Google the term buyer persona and see many, many different types of exercises to help you get clear on that. Next is what we call the SWOT. S-W-O-T analysis, your SWOT analysis. This is strategic planning that involves reviewing your company's strengths, what gives it the edge, okay, your weaknesses, what places you at a disadvantage. Um, you want to also look at your opportunities, uh, what parts of your environment or core competencies can you exploit to your advantage. And then finally, you want to look at threats. And the threats are not uh, external so much as they are elements of your environment that could jeopardize the business, such as economy or population. There may be more retirees in your area uh, who don't need your services. So these are all things that you want to look at. The extent to which you are in your environment of the business matches that of the external environment is expressed in the concept of what we call a strategic fit, meaning that there's a fair chance at reaching objectives or business goals. So your SWOT analysis is important because the results inform later steps in planning that help you achieve your objectives. So key decision makers should consider whether the objective is attainable or not, plan that SWOT analysis and look for results. If the objective is not attainable, then you go back into a huddle like in football and you or, or reconvene and then you select a different objective and you repeat the process of looking at those uh, SWAT elements. Next, we want to look at what are called SMART goals. Goals alone don't really mean much uh, if you don't know what it is that you want to get done in the first place. So we want to look at goals that are specific, uh, measurable, achievable, realistic, and finally, those that are time-bound, meaning deadlines. If you have goals, but 
they don't have, they don't meet the criteria, those criteria elements, then you're going to end up having goals that uh, you don't know whether or not you can achieve them. So they need to be specific in that they target a specific area for improvement. They need to be measurable so that you know what success is, when and if you get there. They need to be achievable, such as like the division of labor, who's going to do what. They have to be realistic in terms of what results can we expect that are provided, um, you know, that we can get based on our available resources. And they need to be time bound in that you have to have set deadlines for reaching certain uh, objectives or else you're never going to know when they get there and things can just drag on and on and on. Setting goals will let you work from, um, from a more organized, a more deliberate uh, perspective where you're reaching objectives easier and faster because you expect to and you know what these objectives are in advance. It's kind of like um, when you watch presidential debates and you can tell that the, the candidates are rehearsed, they're more confident, they're more relaxed. Um, whatever you ask them, they're well prepared for whatever type of question might come. That's what you want to be. Next are standards. Uh, it's important that design, user experience, your branding, your messaging, your tone, uh, your search engine optimization should all be close to those of larger, more successful competitors so that your online presence and all the accompanying marketing collateral will match consistently, look uniform, but also be at the level of larger, more profitable competitors. Um, you wanna be able to get to their level and that's how you do it. Finally, are what we call key performance indicators or KPIs. Uh, digital marketing is like any other form of marketing, except that we use digital media tools to accomplish goals. Now having clear goals and smart objectives are vital. So part of having smart goals is putting them together into an organized, cohesive plan. Determining key performance indicators or KPIs um, basically tells you what success will look like for what project and how it's going to be measured going forward before we begin. That could mean I want 15 or 20% more phone calls uh, within 30 days. I want 20% more emails coming in from potential new prospects within two weeks. But whatever those benchmarks are, you want to set them so that they can be reached and more profit can be made more regularly. Without some of these goals in advance, you end up getting a website and not knowing if you're getting more leads from it or not, and not knowing what you should do or shouldn't do to get more leads. So at the end of the day, it should be about getting more phone calls, not... Um, just saying, I got a website, so now that, that's over with, I'm done. The U.S. Small Business Administration recommends businesses seriously focus on growth, invest at least 10% of their gross annual revenue back into marketing in order to survive. Now, if they actually want to grow, then the U.S. Small Business Administration, of course, actually recommends investing substantially more. Budgets for digital marketing are similar or comparable to those in print or radio advertising and are always going to be less than radio or TV advertising rates with digital marketing's reach always being much greater and lasting much longer than print and radio combined. So I hope that this information is helpful. If you'd like to get more information or get in touch, please visit me at dms.blue and you can call my office line at 424-DAVID-01 to also schedule a mutually convenient phone consultation. So thank you for watching and have a great day.